What's up, Dominic community? My name is Chase, and I'm a 17-year-old machine builder from Maryland. And today, I'm going to be teaching you guys some of the basics of machines. Some people call them chamber reaction machines, others call them Gilbert machines. Uh, for the most part, though, they mean the same thing. Although, as you're going to learn, there are some differences that maybe first-time viewers might not catch. So let's start with the basics. What are machines? At their heart, machines and dominoes are very similar. In fact, I think that's probably why the communities are so closely tied together. Both machines and dominoes are chain reactions in that with a domino setup, you knock down the first domino and every single domino falls until the setup is complete. Same thing with machines. You start the first step and every single step triggers afterwards until the machine is completely done. There are, of course, a few basic differences between machines and dominoes. One is that machines are a lot easier to reset because most of the building time of a machine is in actually building the structure, what you see is that machines can often be reset in a matter of minutes, while domino setups, of course, take a lot longer to reset if they've been toppled on accident. What that means is that machine builders often build riskier tricks, because when they film them, they often have the option of filming many takes instead of making sure things go smoothly the first time with domino setups. Another big difference you see between machines and dominoes is that because machines rely on the potential energy of gravity to continue the reaction, you see them built on tables a lot because then you can have things fall off the side of the table and pull strings to trigger the next step. With dominoes, you don't see that as often. Another thing you see with machines is an increased level of complexity, especially objects that are used multiple times. In fact, multi-use is a big part of what sets the machine community apart. Using a domino multiple times is pretty difficult, but with machines, using a single element multiple times can be pretty easy. For example, you could have a ball that roll down a track and then another ball roll down the track a second time, going through a different path. Or the track can move so that it's in different places when it's used each time. There's actually a lot of possibilities for movement and for multi-use in machines, and machine builders like to challenge themselves by using things in unexpected or creative ways. And the most fundamental difference, of course, is that domino setups are mainly composed of one thing, dominoes. On the other hand, machine setups can be made of almost anything. You'll see household objects, sure, and there may be a, a few similar objects between the many machines that you see, but the fact remains that almost anything can be used in a machine, and the fact that there are so many options means that there are many different machine styles, because those styles depend on the specific objects that the builder builds with. For example, builders in larger spaces might build more spread out machines with more intuitive steps, and builders aiming for simplicity might do that same thing, while others might be working more towards complex and compact machines, and they might put more steps and more ideas and more materials into a smaller space. They might also be limited just by space. Uh, for example, they might be limited to a small table or a small area, and that might drive how their style develops as well. Another thing that affects style, and that you might see, is the type of video. Screen links, for example, include more complex tricks generally because they are in smaller chunks, and so tricks that fail more often are less tedious to reset because it's only that one trick that's being reset when it fails instead of an entire machine. Likewise, you'll see machines at live events are often larger and perhaps more intuitive simply because they might be built for audiences that might be seeing them from a greater distance than viewers of a YouTube video that's shot up close. So anyway, that was a crash course in machines, and in true crash course fashion, I probably delivered it at about the speed of sound. But now we're at the part that you guys want to hear, and that is, how can I get started with machines? What I love about machines, and part of why I'm part of this community today, is the fact that machines have a really low startup cost. You don't have to invest a lot to get your machine career started. In fact, the most expensive things you'll need to build machines are a good camera, and lighting, and table to build on. In terms of actual machine materials, though, there are a few things you'll want. A really important part of machines is adhesive, because you want your machine to be able to stick together, in that every time you test it, you don't want it to be falling apart, or you don't want things shifting around, and you don't want them to move. Basically, the core of machines is that the things you want to move are moving, and the things that you don't want to move are staying still. It sounds simple, but it can be very frustrating at times when parts of your machine are moving because they're not properly secured. And that's why Actually, some of my strongest advice to machine builders is secure things. You may not think it's necessary to secure it, but you'd be surprised by how helpful it can be to tape things down or glue things in place. When it comes to securing things in my machines, I use hot glue for the most part. Hot glue is very useful in many different scenarios, but of course there are situations where scotch tape or duct tape works better, or even double-sided tape. The more you build machines, the more you'll start to learn what situations these are, but for the most part, hot glue can be a catch-all adhesive. Another big part of machines are balls. Balls are really useful in that they're very versatile, you can do a lot of things with them, and they're very easy to use when transferring motion from one place to another, because they can roll on tracks. The most 
basic, and I would say most common ball in machine building is probably the ping pong ball because it's very light and so it's very easy to trigger. But at the same time, it still packs enough of a punch to trigger further elements of the machine. You'll probably find ping pong balls in a good majority of the videos you watch in the machine community. However, it also helps to have other types of balls. For example, larger balls or smaller balls so that you can make tricks that sort things based on size or that perhaps rely on size to create neat multi-use elements. You'll also want heavier marbles or billiard balls so that you can make tricks that rely on weight of a ball. Basically, it's very helpful to have a variety of these just so that whenever you're creating a trick, you have a lot of options on which one you want to use. With balls, I mentioned treks. Now, treks can really be anything. I've used toilet paper tubes that have been cut out, or tracks from toys in the past, or meter sticks, popsicle sticks, even metal railings. For the most part, if a ball can roll on it, you can use it as a track. And that gives you a lot of options. When it comes to building with tracks, of course, you want a mechanism for keeping the tracks angled. A lot of builders use blocks to prop up one end of a track or dominoes to do the same thing. Basically, you want the ball to be able to roll down from one end to the other. Supports don't necessarily have to be blocks, though. Some builders like to use connects to create structures that hold up one end of a track to each their own. And that's actually part of what determines a builder's style, whether or not they have these materials and how they use them. When it comes time to trigger balls, though, that's when string comes in handy. The domino and string technique is tried and true. Basically, the domino acts as a weight on the table, and the string holds back a ball. Or it can hold up another object, for example, the end of the lever that needs to be pulled. When the domino falls off the table, the ball is released. In terms of string, there's a lot of different types. I like yarn because I find it easiest for holding balls back on tracks, but other builders like cord because it doesn't fray as easily. There's definitely merits to each type of string, but most will do the trick. One last material I'd like to mention is one that you might see a lot in machines, and that's building sets like connects. While not everybody has connects, and you'll definitely notice that some builders might not use it necessarily, and it does definitely add a very different style to their machines, connects is a good way for adding complexity because it's a very versatile building system. You can build a variety of structures with connects that suit all sorts of different purposes. However, it is by no means necessary to build a machine. It may seem daunting to initially get into machine building, and indeed your first machines might be very difficult to build. They may fail a lot, they might fall apart, and they might not seem very cool compared to the other ones that you see in the community. I know that was definitely the case for me. If you go back and look at some of my earlier videos, a lot of them are awful. They're poorly filmed, the tricks are unoriginal, They're, some of them are directly copied from other builders. But the point is, the more you build, the more you learn about building, and the better a builder you become. You'll find that your machines will often get a lot better often at an exponential rate. My advice to you is to keep at it. Watch other builders' videos for ideas, of course, and adapt those ideas to suit your own. When you see foreign objects, think about maybe ways you could be used in machines. And the bottom line is, there are tons of machine ideas out there. There's always something new to create, or something to adapt, or just another way to wow the audience. It's a hobby with endless opportunities. And yeah, I encourage you guys to give it a shot. So this week, my question for the Domino community is, what do you think is the biggest difference between machines and dominoes? How about the biggest similarity? Why do you think these two communities are so closely tied together? Leave your answers down in the comments below. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. In the meantime, though, I hope you enjoyed listening to me and my noisy refrigerator. And I hope you learned something about machines. Thank you so much, Chase, for such an amazing explanation on Chain Reaction Machines. I hope this helps you with your projects. You can incorporate some amazing tricks within dominoes. Honestly, I think it's so cool that these two kinetic groups have kind of come together into one big community. But anyways, H5 Domino community, leave your answer to the discussion question in the comments, and I'll see you later.